God damn, what is that smell? Oh yeah, it was this race. It was a pile of fucking dog shit. Let's get into it. This is the fuel. What's happening ladies and germs, this is the Packer Man and welcome to today's edition of The Fuel, part of Motorsport Monday, where today we are going to be talking about the Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500 at Atlanta. This race was anything but a quick trip, I'll tell you that much. Oh man, what a fucking slog this race was. Nowhere near as exciting as the Bristol race was, not even in the same zip code. You know, and evidently it's become a bit of a talking point that maybe it's time to shorten the distance of some of these races. I mean, we have way too many 500 mile races on this schedule and a race like this one, it was a slog. An absolute slog to get through. And it was a pile of dog shit, man. This is basically uh, what I felt about the race afterwards. Of course, there are a lot of factors to it, but I think uh, one of the uh, big factors is uh, I think it's time to repave Atlanta Motor Speedway. I know that's something that a lot of people want to avoid, but, I mean, the pavement is past its prime. It's nearly a quarter century old. And at some point, you got to replace, you got to have it replaced. That's just the bottom line. And, you know, as much as <laughs> I don't think, you know, drivers, I mean, drivers love to race on it because it's like, it feels like they're more in control. And admittedly, it was kind of funny to see um, a lot of the cars kind of just wiggling from side to side at times, but... I mean, a lot of times, I mean, most of the field was 10 seconds or more behind the leader at times. You know, and even though there were a lot of green flag runs and very few caution flags in this race, this race was so fucking boring that it didn't really matter. So, this race was a fucking fail in my opinion. But uh, we'll get to all that in a minute. First, let's uh, go through uh, the news of the week because there is a few topics uh, to discuss. All right, so first things first, the news of the week this week. Uh, since I'm not doing uh, IndyCar reviews anymore with the exception of two races, uh, which, which this year will be the Indianapolis 500, of course, which will take place in August now, and the season finale, which was going to be... Um, Laguna Seca, but it's now going to be St. Petersburg. Um, IndyCar uh, finally held its season opener um, this past Saturday night at uh, Texas Motor Speedway, and uh, that race was also a pile of dog shit because um, Scott Dixon basically took the lead, and it was Dixon wins lol. I mean, <laughs> we saw a lot of the same problems in that race that we saw in the Atlanta race uh, that I watched a few hours ago at the time of recording this. So the first IndyCar race of the season was garbage. I mean, it pulled in quite a number of viewers. I mean, there was 1.4 million people who watched this race, which for IndyCar on a Saturday night is fucking incredible. But what sucks about it is the fact that the race was total garbage, you know? But uh, be that as it may, uh, here are the top 10 results for said race. Scott Dixon, of course, with the win. Uh, basically, he basically won by four and a half seconds, led 157 of the race's 200 laps. Uh, basically, after just Newgarden led the first 41 laps, and then Dixon took the lead, and that was all she wrote, pretty much. Uh, Simon Pagano came home in second, Newgarden in third. Uh, Zach Veach with a top five finish. Ed Carpenter, Connor Daly, Colton Herta, Ryan Hunter Ray, Oliver Askew, and Tony Kanaan rounded out the top ten. So, your point standings. Um, I mean, they pretty much, the top six basically mirror uh, the results. 
Scott Dixon, the point leader, uh, beginning his assault on a potential sixth championship. Uh, Pagano in second, just Snuger in third. Uh, Zach Beach, Ed Carpenter, and Connor Daly in the Carlin Racing Machine, no less, uh, in the top six right now. Moving back over to NASCAR news, uh, NASCAR released uh, its uh, schedule update from June 26th all the way to August 2nd, and uh, holy hell. Um, you know what they say about Christmas in July? Well, uh, <clears throat> damn. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the weekend at Pocono in particular is going to be crazy. Of course, you're, you should be seeing the schedule on your screen right now. I mean, look at this freaking schedule right here. Um, Friday, June 26th is the Menards um, series, the Arca Menard series. And then on Saturday, you have the Gander Outdoors Truck Series. And of course, this is also uh, where the cup, first cup doubleheader is going to be. Um, this was actually, this is actually the sketch, what was scheduled for this year, uh, a doubleheader at Pocono. It, this wasn't because of the frickin' um, COVID-19 situation. This was actually scheduled in advance. For the Cup Series to do double, uh, do a double header at Pocono. So you have Gander at Saturday at 12:30, and then you have the Cup Series at 3:30 on Saturday. Then you have the Xfinity Series on Sunday at Pocono. I don't recall the Xfinity Series running at Pocono before. Huh? That's interesting. Usually they're at a different track uh, than the Cup Series. Usually it's the truck series that goes to Pocono, but Xfinity usually doesn't go to Pocono. Huh. And then the Cup Series will run uh, Sunday at 4 p.m. Why so late for the Cup Series, guys? Well, the races are much shorter because of the doubleheader. I think one's 325 miles, the other one's 350 miles. And then, of course, we have Indianapolis, July 4th weekend. Oh, boy. Although the Xfinity Series is on the road course, and then the Cup race on July the 5th. Kentucky Speedway, um, Xfinity Series is going to have a double whammy there. Uh, they actually have a double header this weekend at Homestead. But uh, they're going to have a double header Thursday and Friday. Uh, and then Saturday is the Gander Outdoors Truck Series. And then the Cup Series will be run on Sunday. I don't think we've had a scheduled Sunday race at Kentucky before for the Cup Series. And then we'll have midweek racing at Charlotte. Uh, once again, only it's the ARCA series uh, at 4 p.m. And then it's the all-star race, basically. The rescheduled all-star race um, for July 15th. And then we have Texas Motor Speedway. Uh, and then Kansas Speedway, which is going to see a doubleheader for the truck series. Um, and the cup, a cup series is actually going to have a Thursday night race, which is weird. That's going to be the opener for the Kansas weekend as opposed to being the, the uh, end cap. And then you have New Hampshire Speedway uh, Sunday, August the 2nd. And that's as far as we've gotten so far. But uh, Michigan, I think, is going to have a doubleheader weekend, and Dover is going to have a doubleheader weekend as well. As we uh, steamroll towards the playoff at that point. And that's what the schedule looks like uh, through August the 2nd. But one of the biggest news stories to come out uh, this week is the first new track to appear on the Cup Series schedule in nine years. Well, at the time it's going to be scheduled ten years. Nashville Super Speedway. Not Nashville Fairgrounds. They're still trying to get that approved. But the 1.3 mile concrete Speedway, Nashville Super Speedway, which has actually been dormant for several years, will host a race in 2021 for the Cup Series. Um, and how are they going to go about that? Well, um, Dover is going to lose one of its dates. Of course, Nashville is owned by the same uh, people that own the Dover uh, International Speedway. So they're going to move one of their two Dover dates uh, to Nashville uh, next year. And apparently it's going to have, a, uh, I think, a four-year deal. Uh, for the Nashville Super Speedway. So while it's a little bit out of left field, I mean, personally, let's give it a shot, you know? It'd be something fresh. For, I mean, 
of course I think we need a, a lot more changes than just the Nashville Super Speedway but I mean this is a good start you know and changing what has been an extremely stagnant schedule although <laughs> this year has been kind of thrown into a disarray uh, although it's basically some of the same tracks you know what I mean just kind of moved around a little bit because of the whole COVID-19 shit but uh, this is the first true step to us sh truly shaking up the schedule uh, in the coming years as we enter the 2020s and that's pretty much it for uh, news of the week so let's go ahead and get into this damn review yay all right I'm not gonna mince words here the Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500 this year was fucking trash. It really was. I mean, it had some, I mean, it wasn't like a zero out of 10 kind of race. I mean, it had some moments. And at the very least, the race had a lot of green flag runs. I mean, the entirety of stage three was under green. And that was a long ass run. But I mean, it was three and a half hours of boring shit. And not to mention the fact that uh, there were several drivers after the race uh, that needed some medical attention, uh, most notably Bubba Wallace, um, who actually um, was in the middle of an interview and it looked like he, uh, I didn't see it personally, but uh, from what I heard, um, he about he was starting to like zone out a little bit. So uh, I think he was suffering from some uh, dehydration uh, after the race. So, you know, Maybe it's time to consider uh, shortening some of these races, like cutting 100, 100 to 200 miles off some of these races, because, I mean, it, it's getting to the point where these races are just too damn long, and when nothing whatsoever goes on in these races, I mean, it, it, it's, it's the cure for insomnia. That's basically what it is. I mean, but when you have races like, you know, Bristol, you know, that, that'll be on, that, that's an edge of your seat kind of race, you know, 500 laps seems like a lot but it actually you know it's it's been a perfect amount especially with the amount of action that we see but for some but for these intermediate races especially you know like races like Atlanta I mean I get that it's got only one race now it used to have two but that got dropped to one I mean I realize that's the only race that Atlanta has but I mean it's just too damn long I'm sorry you know, and I think the track needs to be repaved because the, the pavement is way past its prime. You know, I know that's not what NASCAR necessarily wants to hear, but it is what it is. I mean, and I'm the kind of guy that just tells it like it is, you know. I, I mean, I like NASCAR to death, but I mean, if I see something that I don't like, I'm going to call it out. You know, I do race reviews and I have to be completely honest with you know the people who watch these videos even though there aren't that many but be that as it may you know it's still important for me to just call it like it is you know no frills no bullshit and this race was total fucking trash that's just the bottom line so let's go ahead and run through it um the stages broke down like this stages one and two were 105 laps each and stage three was 115 laps so uh, Chase Elliott drew the pole for the race uh, and he led the first lap. Uh, Kirk Busch had to serve a drive through uh, for failing inspection three times uh, but still managed to recover to a good finish. Uh, there was lots of shuffling uh, in the field. I mean the early portions of the race were all right. Uh, Harvick got by Kez for fifth, Amarola by Lagana for second. Uh, Harvick got by Cobbush for fourth, and we had a first caution on that 26, which of course was competition caution. Uh, and because, you know, tire wear was basically like Darlington, uh, everyone comes in for service, and Logano wins the race off pit road. So he leads on the restart, heads in three wide through the field. Uh, William Byron had a left rear tire failure, and it caused him to make contact with the wall. So uh, it was pretty much a long day for him. He ended up many, many laps down. Uh, lots of tails wagging on this restart. You had some cars that were kind of juking and jiving a little bit. Uh, that was kind of funny to watch. Uh, Kyle Busch and Truex get by uh, Clint Boyer for third and fourth. Uh, we had our first pure lead change of the day on lap 38 with Kevin Harvick getting by Logano. Uh, Truex gets by Logano for the third position. Um, 
Rennick and Elliott uh, have this great battle for the sixth position. Uh, like I said, there were some good battles uh, at, so, at certain points, but I mean, there was not enough. And you know, for in a 500 mile race, I mean, it, when there's no battles on the track, it feels like it just drags on. Um, so the one of Kurt Busch at this point is coming towards the front, at least at the beginning. He started 31st and was up to 13th, but he kind of stalled out right there and couldn't really move forward after that. Uh, Newman kicked off green flag stops on lap 66, but gets nabbed for speeding, as does Keselowski. Uh, Harvick pits from the lead next time around. Uh, Almirola had an unscheduled stop as Harvick cycled back to the lead. I think he had a loose wheel. Um, at this point, everyone from third on back is 11 seconds back of the leader, uh, which was pretty much common throughout this race when it got into long green flag runs. Kind of reminded me of a lot of races at the beginning of the 2018 season. Not good memories. Um, Kyle Busch gets by Elliott for fifth, and then we have our second pure lead change on lap 88 when Truex uh, manages to get by Harvick. Then we have our second caution on lap 95 when John Hunter Nemechek spins off turn four. Uh, everyone comes in for service, obviously. They had 13 sets of tires to change. <coughs> Excuse me. And Truex wins the race off pit road, so he leads on the restart. And uh, at this point, the outside was not the hot ticket on the restart. I mean, Truex made it work a couple of times, but that was about it. Uh, Kyle Busch challenges Boyer for second on the outside and gets it. Uh, had some lots of jostling in the top 10 at the end of the stage. Obviously going for stage points uh, Hamlin gets by hard for the fourth position and Martin Truex Jr. Wins stage one his first stage win of the year uh, Everyone comes in for service and Clint Boyer wins the race off pit road. So he leads the start of stage two um, Boyer and Truex start fighting hard for the race lead trading it back and forth uh, lap 114 uh, Truex led um, For that lap that was our third pure lead change and then Clint Boyer took it back on lap 115 for a fourth pure lead change of the day. Uh, Elliott gets by Hamlin for third, but Hamlin gets back by him on lap 40 uh, when Elliott gets held up by the slow ass car of Quinn Hoff. Fucking moving chicanes. Uh, Kyle Busch and Harvick battle for the fifth position as Boyer kicks off green flag stops on lap 48, or what we thought were him kicking off green flag stops. Turned out he had a right rear tire go down. And that was actually a problem he had to deal with for the entirety of the race because uh, late in this stage, he actually had the same problem yet again on the right rear tire. Uh, and it would actually eventually bite him uh, at the end of this race. So um, Kyle Busch and Harvick get by Elliott for third and fourth. Strix inherits the lead um, as the rest of the field decided to wait until the halfway point of the stage. Uh, green flag stops begin end mass on lap 158. Uh, Boyer cycles back with an 8 second lead, but has 10 lap older tires than the rest of the field. So Truex starts catching Boyer for the race lead. Uh, great battle for 8th between Elliott, Kez, and Jimmy Johnson. Uh, so Truex uh, gets by Boyer for the lead in turn 2 for a 5th and final pure lead change of the day. Yep. On lap 185. Uh, Kyle Busch moves up to 2nd and is just 4 tenths behind Truex. Uh, Hanlon gets by Boyer for third and Harvick gets by him for fourth. Then we have our third caution on lap 202 uh, When Michael McDowell spins off turn four after it looks like he had slight contact with teammate John Hunter Nemechek. Whoopsie um, And a guy breathing a huge sigh of relief was Boyer because his right rear tire once again uh, looks like shredded cheese Everyone comes in for service obviously um, Kyle Busch wins the race off pit road. Truex tries to come out in third because he tried to come to a stop and go out third, but he actually uh, still came out second. Um, and, you know, at this point, I mean, if people are going to start doing that, you know, I mean, that's going to eventually cause an accident at the exit of pit road when there shouldn't be any accidents at the end of pit road for people just suddenly stopping because they don't want to be in a certain position. I mean, if it's going to be like that, then maybe it, it comes, maybe it's time to put in the cone rule, the choose rule. That's a lot of short tracks um, uh, enact for their series. I mean, we have double file restarts, and sometimes, you know, depending on what track it is, you know, either the high line or the low line might have an advantage or a disadvantage. In this case, the outside lane was a major disadvantage. You know, maybe it's time to put in the choose rule and, uh, you know, do some gambling. You know. 
you know, prevent, you know, shit like we saw, you know, in this race at the end of pit road. But that's just me. Um, they probably won't institute it, so it's whatever. Cobbush leads on the restart, uh, but Truex uh, gets a great jump on the outside, which is a bit surprising, uh, and gets a push from Blaney to retake the lead. Uh, it was not a pure lead change because it happened on the first lap after the restart. Um, Jones and Eric, uh, Eric Jones and uh, Christopher Bell make contact after going four wide off of turn four, which is not the first time that's happened between Jones and uh, Bell. Um, this causes Jones to lose the right front tire down the front stretch, um, but he limps it back to the pits, and uh, Martin Truex Jr. wins stage number two. So everyone comes in for service. Uh, Kyle Busch wins the race off pit road, so he leads the start of stage number three, which was 115 laps. Uh, Harvick gets a great run around the outside and takes the lead on the restart, and that is the last anyone else sees of it other than on green flag pit stops. Uh, we had a great battle for fourth between Elliott, Kez, Boyer, and Blaney. Uh, Kyle Busch gets by Truex for second, but Truex gets it back a few laps later. Uh, Keselowski and Blaney battle for fifth, but Kez gets away and passes Elliott for fourth. Uh, Hamlin gets by Keselowski for fifth. Uh, several cars short pit uh, with 63 laps to go. Harvick pits from the lead with 58 to go. And Stike goes back with the lead with 54 to go. Uh, Blaney and Hamlin fighting for the fourth position. Although Blaney at this point reports a possible vibration. Uh, Boyer loses uh, another right rear tire with 14 laps to go. Yes, we jumped right to 14 laps to go because that just shows you how little... I mean... Stages 1 and 2 had some interesting stuff. Stage 3 was absolute fucking garbage. Like, holy shit, Stage 3 was awful. Even though it was clean and green throughout that entire stage, it was boring as fucking shit. Holy hell. Um, but yeah, Boyer loses another right rear tire. Uh, this time under green with 14 to go. Uh, Kirk Busch and Elliott fight hard for 7th in the waiting laps. Kyle Busch gets by Truex for second with four laps to go, but uh, no one was a match for Kevin Harvick in stage three uh, as he wins the Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500 at Atlanta. And that was the race. And it was massive poop. Massive dog shit. So, with that in mind, let's go ahead and get to the top 10 results. Kyle Harvick, of course, with the win. Uh, led 151 of the race's 325 laps, so he led almost half the race, although I think a large majority of that was in Stage 3. Uh, Kyle Busch comes home in second, Martin Truex Jr. in third, um, so he gets his first top five finish of the season, which is kind of surprising, although he is in the top five in points, though, so he has been running well in races, he just not had the fin finishes to show for it. Uh, Ryan Blaney comes home in fourth, Denny Hamlin in fifth, uh, Kurt Busch, Despite, you know, ha having to have a drive through penalty at the beginning of the race for failing post-race inspection, uh, comes home in sixth. Apparently, everything was all good afterwards, so good job by Kurt Busch. Jimmy Johnson in seventh. Chase Elliott comes home in eighth. Brad Keselowski ninth. And Joey Logano rounds out the top ten. There were only ten cars on the lead lap at the end of the race. Like, that's... That's how spread out pretty much everybody was in this race. It was... It was bad. It was really bad. But, um... Point standings after 10 races. Uh, Kevin Harvick, I mean, he's just running away with it right now. Um, two wins, six top fives, nine top tens, and ten starts. Uh, his worst finish has been 11th. And I think that was uh, at Bristol. And he's led 542 laps, which is far and away the most of anybody so far this year. Uh, Logano is 48 points back in second. Then you have Chase Elliott, Brad Keselowski. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. has not won a race yet this year, but he is up in the top five in points. Uh, Denny Hamlin, Ryan Blaney, Alex Bowman, and Kyle and Kurt Busch round out the top ten. Uh, other guys that are in position to make the playoff right now, Eric Almarola, Clint Boyer, Jimmy Johnson, Austin Dillon in the 3 car, Matt Benedetto in the 21 car, and Eric Jones in the final playoff spot right now. And on the outside looking in at the moment is William Byron, uh, Tyler Reddick, Chris Buescher, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And that's your point standings as we hit 10 races 
in the 2020 season. As for my final rating for this race, well, this race was total dog shit. Uh, my final rating for this race is a 2.5 out of 10. This was boring as fuck. Uh, one of the worst races of the year by far. Um, there were 21 overall lead changes in this race, but a large majority of those, a couple of those were on restarts, and then a large majority of those or during an exchange of green flag pit stops. There were only five pure lead changes this entire race. I say only five because, I mean, Bristol had 10 pure lead changes in a 500 lap race that was like 260 some odd miles. So, this one only had five pure lead changes. So, wrap your head around that shit. But yeah, this race was fucking trash. Um, not gonna remember anything from this. Um, it's time for a repave at Atlanta, and it's, I think it, I concur with a lot of people. Maybe it's time to start shortening these races a little bit, because this was a fucking, this was a, this was an ordeal to get through, to be honest. I mean, there were times when I was, like, laying in the, laying in the seat like this, just trying not to fall asleep. Yeah, so I think it's about time to start shortening these races a little bit, because... Having to sit through a slog like that, I mean, holy shit. Just no. Just no. Just no. Just no. But uh, that's going to do it for today's edition of The Fuel. Uh, not exactly the most positive review, but I mean, what else do you want me to say? I mean, I got to call it like I see it, and this race was, was trash. It was absolute trash, you know. And that's just the way it is. Um... But uh, next uh, time uh, is another uh, double uh, whammy review uh, where I'm going to be reviewing um, Martinsville, which is taking place uh, this Wednesday night. So that's going to coincide with AEW Dynamite. Yay. Uh, and then this next Sunday is going to be Homestead. So I'm going to be reviewing Martinsville and Homestead next week. Should be fun. But uh, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, this is the Packer Man, signing out. See you later. You better like and subscribe, or face the consequences. You have been warned.